Guild Academies of Valeria is a 1 to 4 player game for ages 14 and up with an average gameplay length of 90 to 120 minutes published by Daily Magic Games. The basic overview of Guild Academies of Valeria plays out in four phases. The first phase has players recruiting students from the docks which will also let you expand your school and or hire professors. The second phase is the education phase where you will send students and professors that match classrooms to further educate your students. If any students graduate, you can send them on quest to the third phase before refreshing the board in the fourth phase. Quest and prestige tiles are the main way of collecting points, but you can also gain bonuses by placing your banner on console members. And at the end of four rounds, the player with the most points wins. To set up the game, place the board in the middle of the table. Starting on the top left, we will shuffle all purple backed prestige tiles and place the stack face up as a draw deck, then place three tiles, one on each purple section, stopping before the gray section. Next, shuffle the gray backed town classroom tiles. Place the stack face up on the gray section as a draw deck, and then place three tiles, one on each section below, stopping at the end of the game board. On the right side of the board, you will take all the green tiles, unless playing with two players, where you remove the three plus green guild classroom tiles, then shuffle them together and place the stack here on the green section. Draw five tiles and place one on each section here below the stack. Just inside the board, on the green tile side, shuffle and make a stack of monument tokens. Place them face up here, then draw four and place one on each circle below. On the left side of the board, do the same with the favor tokens. Shuffle, stack, and place four below. Next, we will sort the quest cards by guild, which you can tell the difference by looking at the back of the card. Stack each guild separately with the smallest point value on the top and the largest on the bottom. Then place each stack face up over their matching guild area. Next determine the number of players. In a two player game add five tokens of the gray, red, blue, and orange professors to the professor bag. If three players add seven of each color and in a four player game add nine of each color. Then draw five at random and put one on each location here and set the bag off to the side. Next, prepare the student dice bag. Gather the blue, gray, red, and orange dice, and if playing with two players, add nine dice of each color to the bag. If a three-player game, put 11 of each color die in the bag, and in a four-player game, put all 13 dice of each color in the bag. Then shuffle the bag and draw dice equal to the number of players plus one and place that many on each of the four docks and place the bag off to the side. And then place the green round marker on the one in the top left hand corner of the board. Now for a player setup. Every player will collect a player board along with matching quest token, score marker, three player torches, three banner tokens, and three steward tokens. Place the quest tokens here on the quest track of the main board and the score marker up here on the double zero of the main board. Players will also collect a gold token and place it on its starting location above the six on your player board indicated by the small circle inside the main circle. They will also collect the magic token to be placed on its indicated starting location on their player board below the three with a similar smaller triangle inside the main triangle. Each player will also start with one headmaster, which is this purple or magenta looking professor token. Then each player will randomly draw a professor from the bag and place both the professor and headmaster in their faculty area. Then each player will draw two student dice from the bag and place them with the value four face up on the two rightmost slots on their garden area of the player board. Finally, each player will take a random green guild classroom from the stack and put it above their player board in one of these four locations touching the player board. This will start the construction of your academy. Choose a player at random to be the first player 
and give them the first player token, and you are ready to begin. Guild Academies of Valeria plays over four rounds, and each round has four phases. You have the recruitment phase, the education phase, questing phase, and restoration phase. Starting with the recruitment phase, begin with the first player and going clockwise, on each player's turn, they will place one of their steward tokens on one of the unoccupied slots above the four docks. Once placed above a dock, you will select a student die from the dock. When selected, you will place it without changing its value on your player board in the next open space in your garden area. Now the player has a choice of primary actions. They can perform the dock's dedicated action or the banking action, and if desired, perform a single bonus action. Each dock has a different action and a cost to activate. Starting from the left, the castle and dock action requires the player to pay gold equal to the value of the student die they collected. Once paid, they can select one of the face-up gray town classroom tiles to add to their academy. Once selected, add it to your school. We will go over the adding tile rules in a moment. Then at the end of your turn, move any tiles down if necessary so four tiles are displayed face up. The next dock is the ministry dock. This dock action has the player pay gold equal to the dice value collected. Then the player will move one of their banner tokens to a seat on the council. If moving from your player board, it must first be placed on one of the lower green council seats. If already on a seat, you may move it to any other seat on the green lower council or onto the purple upper council. Without going into too much detail, the lower green council will provide bonuses and or discounts during the game, and the upper purple council will provide end game scoring bonuses. For a full list of each council member, check the appendix at the back of the rulebook. In addition, you can collect one of the face up favor tokens and you can use it immediately, then discard it, or save them to use later in the game. Just be sure to discard it after you use it. These tokens sometimes have you pay gold or magic to collect a bonus, and other times they will let you gain a resource or bonus for free. In short, an arrow means pay in order to receive, and a plus sign just means collect. For a full list, please check the appendix. Then once your turn is over, move any and all favor tokens down and draw new favor tokens to the top of the draft line. The third dock is the fountain dock. This dock action has the player pay the gold value of the die they collected. Once paid, they can draft one professor token from their location. Once drafted, slide the remaining professors down and add a random new professor from the bag. Then this symbol means gain knowledge. You have two knowledge points to give to your dice in your garden area. You can give a single die the two knowledge or split it between two dice. To do this, you will increase the value shown on the student die, one for each knowledge gained. And the final dock is the benefactor dock. This dock's action has you pay gold equal to the value of the die drafted. Then it allows you to collect and place a green guild classroom above your player board in your academy. These are the four docks different actions. If you cannot or wish not to perform these actions when collecting a student die, then you must do the banking action. The banking action is how you gain extra gold. This action has you receive gold equal to eight minus the die selected. For example, if you selected a die with the value of three, you would gain five gold with this action. You must take the dock action or the banking action when collecting student dice but you can take an extra bonus action. You can exchange, which has you exchange two gold for one magic, or one magic for two gold, or you can take the council bonus action that has you pay four gold to move one of your banners to a new council member, and your final bonus action option is favor, which has you spend six coins to collect a favor token from those available on the board and use it whenever you wish. You can take the main action, docker banking, and a bonus action in any order. But no matter what, the main action must be taken. Before we move on to the next phase, let's talk about building your academy. You may have purchased classrooms during this phase. When placing a classroom tile, 
onto your academy, you must place it either touching your player board or touching an already placed classroom. You cannot place tiles past the left or right side of your player board, nor can you place them touching only a corner of another tile. An entire side must be touching a classroom. You can use the roads to help guide you on how to place a tile. Additionally, keep an eye out for pedestals. If and when you complete a pedestal, you can immediately collect a pedestal token from those available on the main board. You can gain the bonus immediately if it has a lightning bolt by flipping it to its monument side up on your completed pedestal or leave it action side up until you're ready to activate it. If it has an hourglass, it is used for endgame scoring. Usually, it will go towards the final count when adding up guild types for the purple prestige tile. For a list of these bonuses, check the appendix. Once all players have completed their actions with their steward tokens, the recruitment phase ends and we move on to the education phase. The education phase can be done by all players simultaneously. The first step in this phase will have each player assigning students and professors to classroom. Each classroom will have dice and may have professor requirements to gain their benefits. Here are some examples of what you might see. You will likely have color requirements. If there is just a solid black die or professor, like on your player board, any color can be used since these are considered wild. If you do not have the color of professor needed to fill a classroom, you can always use your headmaster. In order to gain the reward from a classroom, you must meet all requirements. Some other icons you might see are these equal signs, meaning the dice must be the same value, the not equal signs, meaning they must be different values, and or either a specific number or number range on the dice, which must be placed in the classroom. Once all student dice and professor tokens are assigned to the classroom, they can be completed. You will move down any student dice left in your garden area as far right on the path as they can go. Then move on to the attendance bonus. Each professor or headmaster you did not assign will earn you one gold. Also, each of the four lowest die positions in your garden area have bonuses and you will receive any that are not covered by student dice. But if a die is covering the location, you will not receive this bonus. Now it is time to teach the students in the classrooms. Each classroom reward is isolated to the classroom. For example, if a reward has a player earning knowledge, only the student dice in that room can be increased. That also includes die flips. Even if that means lowering their education, it must be done. You can resolve the classrooms in any order, including the classrooms on your player board if occupied. When gaining the rewards, you may receive magic, gold, or victory points. When you receive these, be sure to move your tokens up on those tracks. Some will gain the player's knowledge. Use the knowledge to increase the value of the student dice. If you gain more than two knowledge, you can use all the knowledge on a single die or split it between the dice in the same classroom. Also, if you desire, you can use magic to further increase the value of the dice in the classroom. But you cannot use magic on the dice in your garden area. Each magic will grant you one additional knowledge. If the knowledge of the student dice would exceed the six value, that die would be considered a graduate. It will be flipped to the value of one side and moved to the right side of your player board here on the graduation stage. Graduation can sometimes happen early in the recruitment phase or late during the questing phase. However, all classrooms must be completely processed before moving on to the questing phase. The questing phase is taken in turn order, starting with the player who has the first player marker. They will assign graduate dice to quests to complete. On the bottom of the quest card, you will see the dice requirements along with the reward for completing. You cannot assign the same dice to multiple quests, and all quest cards must be completed fully to gain the rewards. You can complete the quest in any order, but each player can only complete a quest once. When completing, place one of your torches on the completed quest. This does not prevent others from completing the same quest, it just marks that you have completed it and can no longer attempt to complete it once more. Gain any benefits such as magic, gold, and victory points and move their markers for the amount gained. 
You may also gain knowledge, which can be used on any student dice in either a classroom or the garden area. If the knowledge makes a student graduate, you can use it on this turn to complete other quests. You might also have to flip a die or gain one from the dice bag. Once you've completed this, return all graduated dice to the bag. If you have any graduated dice that did not participate in the quest phase, they are also discarded to the bag and cannot be used in a future round. Now count the number of completed quest torches and move along the quest track that many spaces. If you land on or pass the purple shaded track spaces, you will be able to collect a purple prestige tile from those face up along the main board and add it to your academy. Most of these are for end game scoring and are the main source of major points in the game. You will also be able to move one of your banners from either in front of you or one that is already on the console area, but this is optional. It is possible to cross the purple shaded areas and gain two prestige tiles on a single turn. Also, there is a single space on the track that will allow you to swap two tiles in your academy. This is the only way to move a place tile and only happens once. This will not affect any already placed monuments, but if you complete a new pedestal when swapping tiles, you can gain a monument from those face up like normal. Once you've completed your quest track action, you will pass to the next player and they will do the same. Assign graduates, place torches once a quest is complete, gain benefits, and advance on the quest track and gain any bonuses. Once all players have done this, move on to the final phase, the restoration or cleanup phase. The restoration phase has you resetting the board for the next round. Starting from the top left and going down the board, we will be looking for this X symbol, which will tell us what needs to be discarded. This last prestige tile will be discarded and the remaining tiles will move down and a new one will be drawn to fill the space. Continue down the board and you will do this with the favor tokens. Then move down to the gray classroom tiles. Move across the board and remove the last two professors, returning them to the bag. Slide down the others and draw and fill any empty spaces with the new professors. Then remove the last two green classrooms. Slide the others down and draw new tiles. Remove the bottom monument token and slide down the rest to fill the empty slot. Now on to the quest cards. Only discard the top quest card that has at least one torch token on it revealing the next quest beneath it. Quests that have yet to be completed by any player will remain on the board. And finally, return all student dice still in the dock to the dice bag. Shuffle the bag and then refill the dock like we did in the setup. Draw and roll the number of dice equal to the number of players plus one without changing their values. Put them on the dock and repeat for each dock. Lastly, reset your player board by first collecting all of your steward tokens and torch tokens. Move all professors back to your faculty area and move all student dice back to your garden area without changing the values. Finally, move the round tracker to the next round space and pass the first player marker to the player on your left to begin the new round. You will continue playing the same way, starting with the recruitment phase, placing steward tokens and gathering student dice. Then move on to the education phase where you will assign students and professors to increase their knowledge and graduate some student dice. Then move on to the questing phase where you will send out your graduated student dice to complete quests and gain prestige tiles. And finally the cleanup phase or restoration phase as the game refers to it by removing the tiles and tokens with the X's next to them, refreshing the dice pool and collecting your markers. Then move the round marker and pass the first player marker to the next player. If it is the fourth and final round, you will ignore the restoration phase and go straight to the end game scoring. Now we will look at items with hourglass icons for end game scoring. Starting with the prestige tiles, you can see how they score on the tile itself. They range from position tiles, giving you two end game points for guilds matching the guild 
on the prestige tile touching it, professor tiles, which will give you half a point for any and all professors, plus a full point for a professor that matches the guild on the prestige tile. Monument tokens with the professors on them will also count towards this, so try not to forget them. And finally, we have the guild prestige tiles, which will give you one point for each and every guild icon listed on the prestige tile. Be sure and count any matching monument icons. These will provide the majority of your points. But we will also have bonuses from the upper council members you have your banners on. They all have unique ways of scoring and referred to in the appendix of the rulebook. Once all scores have been tallied, the player with the most points wins. And if tied, the player with the most monuments wins. And that is how you play Guild Academies of Valeria. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified about new videos. If you're bored now, click this for more games.